What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today I want to revisit the muzzle attachments in Rainbow Six Siege. Over the years, many members of the Siege community including me have produced guides on which attachments are best for which guns and which playstyles and a number of people have already produced experiment or experience based guides since the introduction of the new recall system with Operation Grim Sky. But there's a fundamental problem with all the guys we have seen up until now and that is that nobody has ever been 100% sure about what each attachment actually does. Recoil in Rainbow Six, like in most games, is randomized and that makes it basically impossible to deduce the precise stat modifiers of each attachment by running in-game tests. But good news everyone, the time of uncertainty is finally at an end. Because you see, I kind of cheated this time. Instead of spending 40 hours shooting at walls in custom games and comparing screenshots, or spending dozens of hours running terrorist hunt missions with every possible attachment, I simply sent an email to Ubisoft asking if they would be willing to share the details of how each muzzle attachment works, and within one day I had the exact breakdown in my inbox. And I have to say, after fully understanding how each attachment works, I will definitely be revising my advice from previous videos. The muzzle break is great, but I now believe that there are some weapons that may in fact benefit from different attachment choices. So let's go over the attachments one by one to find out how they affect the recoil and muzzle flash before discussing which is better for which type of recoil and which type of playstyle. Today's video is sponsored by the hugely popular mobile game War Robots. In this third person action shooter you get to choose amongst dozens of deadly robots which you will pilot during real time battles in teams of 6 vs 6 players. As you build out your hangar you can customize each of your robots with different weapon loadouts to suit your playstyle or to allow you to play different objectives. Choose a small nimble robot such as the Cossack for capturing beacons and flanking the enemy or maybe grab a long range powerhouse such as the Carnage equipped with double Nashorn cannons. The choice is yours. The game is continuously updated with new robots, weapons, maps and even special events like the upcoming Halloween event. Over 100 million players have already downloaded the game on iOS and Android and if you install it now using the link in the description below you will get an awesome starter pack that will give you a Cossack with a full set of weapons and a unique skin plus 100 gold and 400,000 silver. Sponsors like War Robots really help to support the channel and of course if you use my link in the description below it shows them that you came from me which is super helpful so do go ahead and give that a click. To explore the different muzzle device options, let's go from left to right here and the first choice is technically no attachment at all, but of course for almost all weapons in the game this isn't really a choice anyone should make. Next up are the suppressors and those of you who have been following the channel for a while may have seen my 3 part exploration of suppressors in the past. I suspect that some of the exact damage reduction numbers have changed a bit since that series and may warrant another look, but for the purposes of this video let me simply share the info I received from Ubisoft. As we already knew, the suppressors remove the smoke trails from bullets, they remove the white threat indicator that your opponent would normally receive for near misses and they reduce damage by around 15%. In addition to these fundamental changes, I think it is also worth mentioning that the suppressor is hands down the best attachment in terms of removing muzzle flash from your gun. Muzzle flash is definitely not the most important factor when choosing a muzzle attachment and there are several reasons for this. First off, not every gun has a problematic muzzle flash. Many of the Defender SMGs will have such a small flash that no matter what attachment you choose it will never really cause you any problems. And secondly, while the flash on some weapons can be blinding when you are in the darker areas of some maps, in lighter areas the same flash will be barely visible. Long story short, the effect on the muzzle flash will not be important for all guns and only make a significant difference in darker areas, but the effect of each attachment is still worth bearing in mind because the flash can not only obscure your vision but can also make you easier to spot for the enemy. Since the recall changes in Operation Grim Sky, quite a number of players have been trying out the suppressors as their muzzle attachment of choice since controlling the recoil has become a little bit more manageable for many of the guns. 
Whether the damage downside is tolerable for any individual player probably comes down to how frequently you get headshot kills. If you land mostly headshots, then the damage reduction doesn't matter. If you're still aiming mostly for the chest, then maybe stay away from the suppressors for now because the damage reduction can be a real problem, especially at longer ranges. And now we finally get to some of the more complex and more interesting attachments. The Flash Hider has a mixed effect on recoil stats by reducing the first shot recoil by 37.5%, reducing the centering time by 30% and reducing the recoil diamond by 5%. The Flash Hider is also pretty good at reducing the muzzle flash of your gun, who would have thought? But I think before we continue we need to take a moment to explain what each of the stat modifiers means. Vertical recoil reduction is the easiest, it is simply the distance that the gun kicks upwards after each shot and it is interesting to note that the flash hider will only improve the vertical recoil after the first shot. The centering time is how long it takes for the gun to return to the original point of aim after rising during a burst. And I discovered something really interesting here. It would have been reasonable to assume that each gun returns to the starting point at a fixed speed, which would mean that the further up the recoil takes you, the longer it would take to re-zero. That is not the case though and instead we have a fixed reset time. Using the example of the C8 SFW with the flash hider attached, we can see that it takes 300 milliseconds for the sight to come back down to the starting position irrespective of how long a burst we fire. Even after only a couple of bullets the reset time is still 300 milliseconds. And of course, if the reset time is 300 milliseconds with the flash hider attached, then it should be around 428.57 milliseconds without any muzzle device. If we go ahead and test that, we end up with a time of 433 milliseconds, which is about as close as we can expect given that I'm analyzing footage recorded at 60 FPS. Ok, and finally, what's the deal with this recoil diamond? Basically, the probability of recoil movement in Rainbow Six is expressed by a diamond, which means that if for any single shot you end up with a lot of vertical movement, the horizontal recoil will be lower. You will never randomly have the maximum vertical and horizontal recoil at the same time. Of course, the recoil probabilities are different from gun to gun. Some guns will have short and wide probability diamonds while others will have tall diamonds. For some guns the diamond might be biased to either the left or the right hand side and for many guns nowadays the recoil after the first shot is actually much higher than for the rest of the burst. And finally there are now also a number of guns where the first two or three shots are actually quite manageable but the shots after that become completely unpredictable. So reducing the size of the diamond will mean a reduction in both the vertical and horizontal recoil potential for each and every shot. Great, so now that we understand the function of the stat modifiers we can evaluate the usefulness of the flash hider. Only providing vertical recoil reduction for the first shot was a surprise for me, but I guess the description has always told us that the device is best for reducing short burst recoil and the combination of strong initial recoil mitigation and smaller long term tightening of the recoil diamond achieves just that. Minimizing the muzzle flash is a nifty bonus side effect, but when it comes to the centering time I have to say that I'm not too sure how useful this modifier is anymore. Without a doubt, for less experienced players who do not control the muzzle climb of their gun when firing bursts, the reduced reset time is super useful because it will allow them to reacquire their target more quickly after finishing a burst. But after almost three years of competition in Rainbow Six that keeps intensifying from season to season, almost every single active player in Siege nowadays is controlling the recoil of their weapon while firing. When you control the recoil so that you have minimal muzzle climb during the burst, the reset will actually pull the gun down below where you started out and the faster that happens, the more violently you will have to push your mouse or control stick back up at the end of the burst to stop your reticle from dipping down too far. Is that a huge issue? No, nobody has ever complained about this feature but it is worth keeping in mind. Let's move over to the compensator now and this attachment is nice and straightforward. It simply reduces the recoil diamond size by 17.75%, nothing more, nothing less. This means that every shot, not just the first one, benefits from the compensator's positive effects, but the effect is significantly reduced compared to other muzzle devices, especially when it comes to the vertical recoil control. 
and I guess once again, the in-game description is actually pretty helpful for us in terms of understanding the strength of the compensator being longer bursts. The muzzle flash for guns is improved over having no attachment at all, but the ring-like flash will still obscure your sight picture to a degree. The muzzle brake is also pretty simple. The muzzle flash is directed mostly sideways with only the occasional flash of fire creeping into the bottom of the sight and it reduces both the first shot vertical recoil and centering time by 45%. There are no improvements at all for later shots in a burst. And last and also least, before I move on to some conclusions we can draw from all of this new knowledge, there is of course the extended barrel. The function of this attachment is already quite well understood. It does not improve recoil in any way, but will increase the lowest damage your gun will do after drop off. I still represent the opinion that adding a little more power to a gun at 28 or even 35 meters depending on the gun is not very useful in a game where the average kill distance is less than 10 meters. And so let's draw some conclusions. The easiest conclusion of all is that for single fire weapons such as the pistols or DMRs, the muzzle break is still absolutely king. When every single shot you fire is also the first shot of your burst, because they're all single fire, the recall benefit of this attachment will stack up to basically reduce the muzzle climb by half and having a faster reset time in between is also very helpful. Furthermore, for guns that have a particularly aggressive first shot recoil that is much larger than that of later shots, the muzzle brake can still be a great choice to try to even out the muzzle climb. In the past, I had basically written off the compensator as not being a great choice. Putting a bunch of lead downrange is an important part of gunfights in Rainbow Six Siege, but if you find yourself firing bursts of 15, 20, 30 shots or more, then something has probably gone horribly wrong and you are more than likely to lose the current fight. So in the past, a logical conclusion here was, why attach a muzzle device that works best for longer bursts? But given what we know now about the function of the muzzle attachments, I believe there might actually be some weapons in Siege that could truly benefit from the compensator. Any gun that has manageable muzzle climb but has either a tendency to wander off in a particular direction or, even worse, will suddenly and unpredictably move to either side could actually benefit from a reduction of the recoil diamond provided by the compensator. You see, pulling down on a mouse or pushing forward the stick to counter vertical recoil is a skill that can be learnt with a bit of practice. Randomized left or right movement is impossible to control no matter how much experience you have. So for instance, Ella's Scorpion, Mira's Vector or even Alibi's MX4 may actually benefit more from having the horizontal recoil tightened up than they would from easier first shot vertical recoil control. As you can see in the tests in the background, both the Scorpion and the Vector will still branch out left or right during longer bursts, but nowhere nearly as bad as when using the muzzle brake. And what about the flash hider? As we have suspected until now, the stats confirm that this device really is a compromise between the compensator and the muzzle brake. And so it would be guns that have strong first shot recoil, but also a tendency to travel left or right that would be best served with the flash hider. Beyond different recoil patterns, different gameplay styles could also be taken into account. If you have a habit of just holding down the fire button until your gun runs dry or the opponent falls over, then the compensator might provide you with more of an advantage than the other attachments. If on the other hand you tend to use controlled bursts, then the flash hider or even the muzzle brake might be more of your cup of tea. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of what each muzzle attachment does and what their individual strengths are. I for one will be going into the operator selection menu to have another look at the baseline recoil style for every gun to maybe spot some opportunities to try out the compensator or flash hider on certain weapons. Who knows, maybe I'll come away with some new setups that will suit me better than just sticking the muzzle brake on pretty much every gun. If you like these kinds of videos, there's always more coming in the future and you know where the like and subscribe buttons are. Plus, I've started live streaming with a regular schedule of four streams a week, so why not come and join me there as well, if you like. And with that, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.